we do have some news to break. Um, we've got some guys uh, signed long term. Um, we're really excited to announce that uh, we've reached new agreements with Raul Ruiz Diaz uh, and uh, Joe Paulo, uh, as well as Javier Arriaga, uh, and all of those players are under club control now through at least 2024. Uh, so uh, the big news there, obviously, Raul and JP um, are two uh, two of our best 11 guys. Uh, you know, one of them one of them MVP finalists last year. So we're really really excited about that. Um, and those two things uh, combined with uh, the Brad Smith transaction uh, that, that we were able to uh, get done last week. Um, it was not a deal that we wanted to do. Um, Brad has been a, a really integral member of our team, instrumental to us winning the, the MLS Cup in 2019. Um, but we got an offer we couldn't refuse, and effectively by doing that transaction, it allowed us to kick open our championship window by an extra year. So uh, the proceeds of that deal will go almost immediately and, and entirely into the 2023 budget. Uh, but you guys have seen me talk uh, at length about how three years of a flat salary cap uh, really constrains what we can do. Um, and so we were very, very tight in terms of this team, but we could not pass on the Rusnok deal when it came up. We could not pass on the Smith deal when it came up. And combined with now resigning uh, two of our big stars uh, in JP and in uh, Raul, uh, as well as uh, uh, getting Javi to commit to us long term, we're really, really excited about what the next two years holds uh, for the Seattle Sounders. So prior to that move, were you, were you, it sounds like you guys were mentally prepared for this sort of to be the end of the window of your sort of championship window maybe the way that 2019 was in the same I, I wouldn't say it in, in that absolutist fashion but jeremiah we knew that we had to do something in order to keep this together past 22 whether that was sell a player trade a player you know obviously things happen every year right um and and, and look the, the the good news was is we went into this and we had 12 months of runway once we did the Riznak transaction to say, all right, we have to, but we do have, we did put ourselves in a world where we had to find a solution. So we were able to do that then with a, with a Smith deal. And do you imagine that there's flexibility for this summer or is it like, is, is it really like 2023 is where we're looking at this? It, yeah. Look, look at, you know, when I, when I say, you know, if it's not a hundred percent going to 2023, it's, it's 80 or 90% going. So again, things happen. Um, Obviously, a player knew who Tolo had an amazing performance against Mo Salah yesterday uh, on a pretty big stage. Um, and uh, he'll continue to start for Cameroon. They have some World Cup qualifiers coming up pretty soon. Um, you know, but that is a player, uh, for example, that maybe we get some interest in abroad. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, we'll see what Nuhu wants to do. Um, but certainly congratulations to him. Really, really great performance, standout performance. And, you know, as we move forward with our team, you know, as guys do well for us and internationally, we're going to have interest in some of those guys. And that'll cause us to need to be flexible, I think, in terms of uh, some of the team building aspects. Garth, in professional sports, like you say, change is the constant. But what does it do to the team right now, knowing that you know you've made some solid moves now, and how important is that for them getting ready for the big season? So there isn't any, you know. Look, I, I think it's really important for Champions League, first and first and foremost. You know, to have everybody in here and sign out. Now, look, we've just gone through a preseason camp where I think we only had three or four starters with the group because of the COVID-induced uh, World Cup qualifiers. Right? We have seven guys, I think, that were still haven't reported yet because of that. So the camp now in Palm Springs will kind of be our first time to get everybody together. Um, and that's going to be very exciting, I think, and a real opportunity for us. But to your point, Maz, we're going to have to still ramp up methodically, carefully, and really look at the, the season as a whole, as opposed to you know a one-off game in Honduras on February 17th. But we are super excited about the team that we've built. Um, again, we think it's one of the best groups that we've had here, and we have it in place from day one. Once we get these guys back from World Cup qualifiers, once we ramp everybody up physically um, and if we go through that progression we think we have a, a real chance to succeed really on all fronts this year hi Jada hi how are you doing I'm doing all right how are you good good uh, sorry, I'm a little bit late with the but so JP isn't uh, here right now though he is not here okay. he's got green card issues um, but to be clear I, I we are very close to some good news on that one as well so um, we are hopeful that he will be here in time to join us in Palm Springs can we talk a little bit about Nuhu then? Um, sure. Yeah, so uh, I would think that you need a defender more than money right now, but what do you think as far as his stock and, and, a, and a possibility um, as far as you know, transferring him or anything like that? 
like that after his performance in the Africa Cup. Sure. Look, the, the European transfer window is closed. Yeah. So it shut down at the uh, end of January, and so the next opportunity for Nuhu to be to go abroad would be in the summer. Um, and obviously, that's out of our control, right? You know, we'll see if, if folks are interested or they're not. Uh, what I would tell you is is they should be <laughs> after that performance. Uh, I thought New, New Who was dynamic and dynamite. And, and look, he's everything that I think we've seen here in, in, in fits and starts over the past four or five years. So certainly, I think that's a possibility that, that he may want. And look, the other thing. It depends what New Who wants to do. You know, if, if there's New Who want to stay here, does New Who want to go? Um, you know, and obviously, we can't talk to him yet because he's still with Cameroon and he's got the third place game. And um, he has then... Uh, green card stuff related stuff too so it may be a while before we see new who I, I hope that's in the next couple of weeks um, but again we got to get everybody back here on the ground together ramped up and then we can tackle what comes if and when it comes but certainly that's a possibility Jada that that uh, you know we'd have to entertain uh, if that if that came up and, so that, and, and that wouldn't even those kind of conversations wouldn't even start until later as far as anybody even poking around as far as interest I know it's closed, but you know what I mean? Like yeah, we've, we've not had any formal offers. So that, that's where things stand right now. Um, you know, so yeah, I think, look, as I, as I I think I said before you came up, yeah. the World Cup qualifiers that Cameroon plays in March I think will be a really important platform. And uh, Nuhu's performance between now and then will be a very important platform. So now, you know, he's, he's had this moment. He's had the spike. Can he sustain that? Can he come in and, and have that level of play with the Sounders in the Champions League? go back and do it again for Cameroon, that'll but ultimately determine whether or not there are offers for him or not, what his opportunities are. What do you think about the depth that that, um, that position or, you know, as far as the defensive line that you guys have going right now, the depth? You know, look, we had, we had, you know, an embarrassment of riches in that we had three guys that could start at left back at an MLS level. Obviously, we, we made a transaction with Brad that, that as I said, propped open our, our championship window another year. Um, we still have two really, really good players in Nuhu and Madranda. Um, obviously, if you move one of them, then you'd have to replace that player. Um, and look, the, the sooner you know if interest is there or not, obviously, the longer you have to plan. Um, but again, look, if Nuhu wants to stay here, no one would be happier than me. I mean, that, that, that's that's easy. He, he's, he's been a big-time player for us for a long time. He had the performance that we all thought he was capable of. And if he wants to stay here, we'll welcome him with open arms. And, and look, if he comes back and says, hey, in the summer, you know, if the right offer comes, I want to go, then we'll, we'll work to accommodate that as well. And, and uh, you know, hopefully there's some proceeds on the other end of that that allow us the resources then to be able to replace Nuhu. Did you say that he was in the process of getting his green card as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we have Ariaga, JP, and Nuhu uh, all working on green cards as we speak. So, um, again, I don't know, as, as you and I have talked about, Jeremiah, you know, there's never a guarantee on those outcomes. Um, but, you know, if we did get favorable news, hopefully that's in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, for this season, players and stuff. So what is the, how do you think about the players, the academy players or the Tacoma Defiance, how do they fit in the long run planning for the club? Yeah, so, so that's a great question, Felipe, and I'll give you a positional example, right? We had AB come in last year at center back uh, and play almost a thousand minutes as one of our young players there, right? Um, and now we had uh, Shane O'Neill, really good job for us for multiple years got a big contract with Toronto and free agency. You know, this is the first year of meaningful free agency. We're going to see more of that. Guys moving in, guys moving out. Um, but we've chosen not to replace you. And the reason we've chosen to do that is because we have Josh Atencio who can play there. We have AB who can play there. Uh, and we have a kid in camp, Jackson Reagan, uh, that's a potential to sign with the first team. Uh, and so we have not one, not two, but three potential young options to really come in and bolster that back line. Obviously, that's a spot new who can play as well in a pinch, depending on if we wind up with two or three in the back line. So as one example, there's that. Obviously, Leva, Atencio, both are hurt right now. Um, but as those guys get healthy, they will be in the mix. Uh, you know, other young players, Ethan Dubler sent on loan uh, to the Czech Republic to get him some more games. You now, that's a player where if we were to wind up in a 4-2-3-1, he's more of a pure winger in terms of what he what his inclination is. So maybe that's a kid who, who pops for us in the next year. And obviously then the, the kid that we, we saw flashes of already last year, Leo Chu. You know, if you go to a 4-2-3-1, if, there's, if there are winger positions, Leo Chu is a kid who could really benefit from that. So that's just, you know, half a dozen names just off the top of my head that I think are going to have big roles in this team. And we haven't even gotten to the Reeds and the Obeds and the other kids that, that uh, you know, potentially are in the pipeline as well. So they will continue to be very much a part of our process uh, and very much a part of a championship team. I mean, if you're talking about just take, take our schedule just in the next month, we have... 
uh, you know, play in Honduras on the 17th, and we have two games in three days, 24th, 27th, right? Two big games, home leg of Champions League, home opener. Um, if you win the Champions League, now you got five games in 14 days because you, you have to, whatever you play in the next round, probably a Mexican team, probably a very high-level game, in addition to uh, multiple MLS games. So you can see right there, you're going to have five high-pressure, high-level games, and you're going to need to rotate the squad. So we are coming in this. We had 20, I think we have 27 or 28 signed now. I think 27 maybe after Brad being out. Um, you know, you're going to need everybody. You know, you're going to need that full group uh, to be engaged, to be involved as we, even in the early part of the season here, uh, I think you're going to see them have an impact. So a couple weeks ago we talked about Nico Madero and he said that we, we haven't seen him yet in, in terms of that knee stuff. Now that he has been here, now he's been playing you know, down in Tucson. How is he feeling? How, how does he look to you? He's moving well. Um, we are going to ramp him up slowly and cautiously. Obviously, we had uh, not one but two different instances last year where we were not able to successfully ramp him up. We got him right to the edge, got him back on the field, and then we then we fell off a cliff again. So we're doing everything we can now to not fall off a cliff, to try to ramp him up slowly and safely, uh, and that's the process we're going through right now. You saw him play for the first time. I think you'll see him play maybe a little bit more than that in the next uh, round of uh, preseason games. But again, we are not trying to spike guys to be ready for a single one-off game in Honduras on February 17th. We are trying to get our guys prepared for the season as a whole. And again, when you have 27 guys signed and you have the young guys and you have the depth we have, we believe we can compete against Matagua, even if we aren't fully at 100%. Uh, Jordy Delem, um obviously had the knee injury last season. Is it as simple as, as that not being, as far as him not returning this season? Jordy Delem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, Jordy's, Jordy, unfortunately, he's not healthy yet. So he's, he's still working. He's getting close. Um, and once he gets the medical clearance, then, then we'll make a decision on his status. Um, but yeah, right right now he can't play soccer, so there's no, uh, there's no decision to make. But, Can you say where he is? I think he's close. I, I, I know he was doing some testing today, you know, so I mean, he's obviously physically here working out with our staff. He's an awesome guy. He's been, again, part of championship teams for us. Um, you know, so nothing but good things to say about Jordy. I just don't know what's going to happen until he, until he gets medically cleared. There's no decision for, for us to make. So, but it should, again, sorry, Jada, to answer your question better. I think he's going to get cleared in the next month or so okay. from what I understand. Uh, but obviously until that happens, there's, there's, no, there's no real decision to make. Y'all put the uh, letter out to the fans um, yesterday, and forgive me if this is something that you guys always do. I don't remember seeing it. Um, so why, why was that important um, to release that, you know, kind of have a, have a thing for the fans? Sure. Uh, it's not something I think we've done every day. And look, that's that's uh, probably emanating from the business side more than the soccer side. But that said, I think it was what it was was a real encouragement that, you know, as hopefully we're finally getting to the winding down phase of the pandemic, like we really want to get everybody back in the stadium and get everybody together and welcome everybody with open arms. And um, again, to try to be an inclusive member of the community and really try to be a, a positive beacon where, hey, you can come back to Lumen and it's safe and, and we can all get together and celebrate the sound and we'd love to see everybody back because understandably people have had really legitimate reasons to not come back you know, or to say well I'm just going to come back for this game or not that game and all that and you know hopefully now we're at a point where we can get we can get a full building again and we can get we can get back to normal so to speak so that was the impetus behind that and, and the belief uh, you know we have such a loyal fan base we've been so fortunate you know I've talked to to Jeremiah over the years about you know what's what's special about Seattle and what's special is the fans. The fans, and they come out when they come out when they support. Um, when you're signing an Albert Rusnak, he's coming here because there are 40,000 people in the building every week, and you know that's that's such a special thing. And so, just out of respect for our fan base, we really wanted to send everybody a letter and say, hey, you're all welcome. We understand why why some folks have been staying away, but we'd love for you to come back. A few uh, moves on the kind of developmental side. It looked like you guys are. Uh, have an opening for uh, academy director, and then uh, if you could speak about the moves on Ray Serrano and Ethan Dovler. Sure. Um, Gary Lewis got the uh, New York Red Bull uh, two head coaching job, so the equivalent to what Wade Weber does for us. Uh, Red Bull's been a really successful organization uh, over the years, developing uh, players and staff. Uh, so we were we were really sorry to lose Gary, but really proud of him, and and he's done an amazing job. He's an amazing person. Um, just, you know, look, it's it, we've, we've had a uh, 
some turnover, you know, with our development staff. You guys, some of you guys might have seen Mark Nichols move into Columbus as a technical director again. So uh, Chris Little thriving in the first team staff with Colorado. So look, as long as we keep developing these players and, and we're going to keep developing staff members as well, Gary's a big part of that. Um, so yes, we, we are now looking for an academy, new academy director to replace Gary. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. We're going to let that process play out. Um, uh, but definitely, you know, Look, in the short term, pain. But in the long term, I think it's a good sign that we're doing some things well, that, that people are, are seeking out our folks and, and continuing to promote them. And then, uh, sorry, Ray Serrano and Ethan Dobler. Yeah, Ray's, Ray's with uh, Louisville for this year. Um, and again, uh, you know, again, you know, some of these guys, the number of players we're producing, not everybody can play. And for some of the guys that have been here for three years, four years, we got to get them other opportunities. You saw us a little bit with Osriel Gonzalez at the end of last year, um, even with Shannon Hopiow and, and some of the other Trey Muse and some of the other loans that we've done. Um, you're, so you're going to see this, and it's going to be a mix and a match. You know, you're going to see some guys go abroad. You're going to see some guys go in the USL. Um, you know, you're going to see some guys. You know, uh, you know. We're going to have to be creative with various solutions. So Ray was a guy who had done everything we could. I thought he had his best year for Defiance last year. Um, but he's just at a spot when our, on our team it was hard to break through. Uh, and given that, you know, it made sense, I think, to get him to get him another opportunity. And um, we have a really good relationship with Louisville. Um, uh, the coach there used to work with uh, Craig Weibel. Um, so we were really excited that that would be a good opportunity for him to develop. And you asked me about one more. Dobler. Doubler, doubler in the Czech Republic, um, and that one, uh, the way that the transfer windows wind up, line up, excuse me, in terms of a, of a foreign loan, um, our window closes on it's either May four or May five, but it's such that it, that gets you for all of the Czech season, but for one or two games at the end, and so unless they're contending for the title probably you can even bring Ethan back. So we thought it was a way where in this space where the defiance season looks like it's not going to start till the end of March, last week of March, first week of April, uh, in that space, as we settle on this formation, could we get Ethan out for effectively three or four months, get him hopefully 15, 20 games, uh, and then get him back so he can hit the ground running with defiance when he comes back um, or, or with, the, with the first team, depending on, on what he looks like.